Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith, um, University of Ottawa, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. So I'm continuing off on the previous video talking about Greenland. Um, I've reached, I'm talking about the Arctic uh, report card that came out in December and I'm looking at Greenland and I'm looking at GRACE data, satellite data showing the increasing amount of ice mass loss in terms of gigatons of ice um, from Greenland over time. So we're reaching um, very, you know, it's very rapid decline. In fact, the doubling period uh, is roughly about seven years, same with Antarctica. And this would lead to massive sea level rise, um, seven meters by 2070 from a back of the envelope calculation. Just Google a previous YouTube video where I had can sea level rise seven meters by 2070. Um, the albedo or the reflectivity of Greenland is dropping very rapidly because of, first of all, the ice on the surface is melting back. There's less snowfall and the snowfall that there is, is um, melting more quickly. The duration of the melt is longer. So as the fresh snowfall, which has high albedo, maybe 80, 90% even, as that melts back, you see this type of average albedo. This is, so this is a yearly albedo average, you know, about 75%, around 2000, dropping down here as low as just over 68. Um, this is um, June, July, August data, and this is just for uh, July data here. So 74% dropping down, um, you know, this is a, this is a large drop in albedo. So this means that more and more solar energy is being absorbed. So this is showing the spatial change of where the albedo is dropping, mostly at the edges. You know, if this is covering, if these ice shelves are, are, uh, drop going rapidly as receding, then it's the dark earth rocks underneath that is much lower. So the albedo changes, the purple is around the edges. Um, this is also, um, so it's also being, the ice is getting darker as you melt back, you expose more and more of the soot and dirt that has been trapped in the ice for a long period of time. And uh, so this is, this is an important issue. Just doing a time check. Okay, don't want to run over my allotted 15 minutes. Um, so also, as you get meltwater ponds on the surface, those absorb a lot of solar energy. In fact, they can absorb 90% of the incident uh, solar energy will go right into that meltwater, heating it up, causing further melting, under, you know, cutting through hole, cutting through, creating crevices in the ice or moulons like waterfalls, you know, cutting paths right down to the bedrock, lubricating the bedrock, increasing the transport of glacial ice. Okay, so there's a lot of different issues. Black carbon, you know, as there's more and more fires in the far Arctic because of the warming, a lot of that soot and ash gets deposited onto the surface of Greenland, causing the surface to be darker. So it's all of these factors. Um, these are some of the surface air temperatures at various stations on Greenland. And you can see that there's various records occurring in 2016. Um, these are, of course, marine terminating glaciers. The cumulative, this is a cumulative change in area in square kilometers. So from 2000 to 2015, we're losing ever, in, we're, it's pretty, you know, you could draw a straight line coming down. We're losing lots of the area of the glaciers that are terminating on the ocean. And these are act, these act like, those in ice sheets act like corks uh, holding the ice back. So when those go, the speed of glacial flow increases, you get more and more calving. Okay, so the next section is of course the sea ice. And I've talked a lot about the sea ice. Um, you know, we had, this year was the second lowest. Um, 2012 was the lowest. But what's happening this year is the, uh, this shows the spatial extent in March and September of 2016. But what's happening this year 
Um, this is a loss in March. This is a loss in September. This is at minimum in 2012. Um, it, this is a 2007 number. Um, okay, the percent difference. Yes, okay, so we've been losing lots of sea ice. So the 2016 daily minimum ice extent was the second lowest on record, but the monthly value, so this is the monthly value for all of September, it was the fifth lowest because the ice rapidly formed. Uh, the minimum was early, it surprised everybody. It was about September 9th, and then the ice started forming quickly in late September, it formed very quickly. So if you take the average over the whole month, it was only the fifth lowest, but, it, but the actual minimum value that on, a, on the September 9th or whatever was the second lowest. Okay, uh, age of the ice. This is 1985. Um, this is 2016. So this is five-year-old plus ice. Older ice is harder. It's harder to melt because over time, the brine po pockets that are in the ice, which are the salt water, liquid salt water pockets in the ice, they honeycomb the ice when it's first year, second year. Over time, though, they start, gravity pulls them down. They work their way through the ice until they enter the ocean. So the ice gets purer and purer and harder and harder the older it is. So there was lots of five-year ice, and now there's only a few pockets of ice here. Um, we're, we've lost almost all of the multi-year, five-year ice. Mostly it's first-year ice. Um, second year ice, some third year ice, but the ice that is in the Arctic is younger and therefore it's weaker than it was before. So this is another feedback. This shows you the one year, one year ice increasing, four plus years going to almost zero. Now the sea ice thickness as measured by Cryosat, there's PO mass models, is this is April 2016. Um, this is this is April 2016 minus the mean 2011 to 2015. So you can see um, how much, you know, loss of one meter of sea ice, gain of one meter. So the vast area, there's a lot more blue here than there is red. So some areas, the, the areas that are getting thinner and thinner, thinner outweigh the areas that are gaining. The net result is the overall ice is getting thinner. Um, and as a result, when it's thinner, the albedo decreases because the light can go right through the thin ice, especially if there's no snow on the surface, and you can get it gets to the underneath of the thinner ice, and you get algae growing on the bottom of the ice, which darkens the ice further, causes the albedo to drop even more, causes more absorption to occur. Now, around the ice, of course, as the ice goes, the sea surface temperatures are increasing. So in August 2016, up to five degrees Celsius warmer in regions of the Bren and Chukchi Seas. Um, there's huge ocean warming there, okay? Um, and this is because these are regions that had ice before and no longer have ice. So this is the sea surface temperature in August of 2016 here. And of course the, the water, because it's salt, if it's normal, Ocean salinity, 35 uh, parts per hundred, or PSU, uh, or um, practical salinity unit. It's about minus 1.8 when it freezes, so the water just outside is slightly above that, because this is water, and then you get really super warm water over here. These regions here are warming significantly. This is a penetration of heat from the Pacific Ocean. And this is the Anomaly, so if you take August 2016, subtract the 1982 to 2010 mean, then you get this sort of thing. You get these areas here. There used to be a lot of sea ice there, and now there's not. Uh, so the temperatures were taken at zero, I guess, there. Um, and this is, so they're much warmer now relative, you know, this is three degrees, two degrees, two to three is the red. So they're much warmer around the ice now. And this is if you take what's happened, the difference from August 2016 to four years ago, and you can see also the, the changes here. Um, this is in the different regions, Chukki Sea, the Barents Sea, under the, um, and the East Baffin Bay, means sea, sea, 
surface, uh, sea surface temperature anomaly. Um, so this is about minus 0.8. This is about one. So it's gained, it's gone up almost two degrees in a trend line. Um, some basins are taking off um, in the last few years. Okay, so that's the temperatures. Now, of course, the changing temperatures, the more exposure, uh, the more surface uh, water exposure, it's not covered with ice, it changes the biology of the Arctic significantly. So with open water, you get more chlorophyll A concentrations that are higher in certain regions. Um, and so the, the whole, the whole uh, food chain is changing in the Arctic. Now, the, the, um, the food chain is much shorter in the Arctic. There's less species. So changes um, in the primary productivity will, have, will rip, ripple up the food chain a lot more. And, and I will be mentioning the ocean acidification, which is largest in the Arctic than just about anywhere else. And that threatens the entire food chain. Um, we're getting more archaea, which is the smaller life forms in the Arctic than we, we, were, we were before. Um, this shows some spatial images. You know, some regions the chlorophyll is increasing, other regions it's decreasing here, um, and uh, decreasing a lot. Um, and this is May, June, July, August, the trend of chlorophyll A. So, you know, these are some areas where it's increasing significantly. Um, so the yellow up 0.1, the reds are up um, even much higher. Okay, so this is, so as the sea ice drops back, you get more exposed water, water's warming, you get a change in the chlorophyll. And this shows you some trends from 2002 to 2016. Um, for May, uh, June, May, June, July, August, the four months here. And these are in different regions. So this is Laptev Sea, north of the New Siberian Islands. This is the Barents Sea, west of Nobea Zemla, the island. And this is the Labrador Sea. So you can see different, um, different cycles. Um, you know, and this, this spikes here in May. Um, and here in this part, this, the spikes are in August. So it depends on which region there is, you know, how long the water becomes exposed. So this shows you primary productivity um, over the last uh, decade or so in all of these different regions. Um, and you can see where the trends are the highest, Eastern Arctic, um, high trend, high number. You know, this is pretty high in the Barents Sea and it seems to be lower in other places. Um, okay, um, this shows you know, this just has, shows more statistics on the trend. Okay, so also what is happening is as the Arctic is warming, the frozen permafrost and tundra on the land is thawing and we're getting a greening of the Arctic. And that greening, that additional vegetation in the Arctic will then act as a sink for CO2, but there's also a lot of emissions of CO2 and methane from the thawing of the permafrost, and that far outweighs the vegetation effect. So this shows how the vegetation is increasing here, the greening areas. This is from 82 to 2015, the change. Parts of Siberia where there was shrubs only, nothing growing higher than a few inches, um, six inches say, now there's forests six to eight feet high a decade later. Um, so, so the vegetation can start go, growing quickly. It depends also a lot on the quality of the soils. Um, this shows um, the North America, okay, the change in North America, the change in Eurasia, it's much higher, so the warming's faster there, and the change, the average change in the Arctic. And this is showing something called time integrated, and if you do time integrated, um, there is some dropping trend here. I'm not sure why. I think what's happening is maybe the quality of the soils is not good as you get, uh, you know, something's going on. Maybe something's coming, um, there's some emission that's stunting the growth. Maybe um, your, the first growth of vegetation is higher uh, reflectivity, brighter, lighter color, 